Okay, so in Chapter 10, we've talked about, um, we've been talking about thunderstorms. We've talked about um, air mass thunderstorms, and they're relatively tame, no severe weather. We do have lightning, uh, but remember to be a severe thunderstorm, you need to have a certain wind speed and or a certain size of hail and or spawning tornadoes. And then um, we talked about a capping inversion, and that's one way in which you can kind of get these air mass thunderstorms to form. Now, thunderstorms in general always have these three stages. They have a cumulus stage, a mature stage, and a dissipating stage. There's this other type of cell that's not an ordinary cell. It's called, called a supercell thunderstorm, or a, um, yeah, supercell thunderstorm. And notice what this slide says, that um, a few things. They last longer than ordinary cells. They, um, they're larger, and so actually if you look at them on a radar, you can actually kind of get a sense for their size. These are large. Supercell thunderstorms are large. They're something that meteorologists get kind of excited about. I'm going to show you a diagram of a supercell thunderstorm here in a minute. But um, the other thing about supercell thunderstorms is that, do you remember we talked about wind shear, where basically the wind is going really fast and then kind of slower, um, uh, um, more so than usual. Well, that sort of wind shear can kind of get a big old roll of, uh, a big old tube of air basically kind of rolling. And that is what we call the, a mesocyclone. And if you can get that horizontal mesocyclone kind of setting up vertically, then you can have a twister or a tornado kind of drop out of that rotating air that is now within a supercell. So that's a little bit in advance because we're going to talk more about that when we talk about tornadoes, but I was just going to kind of kind of um, let you in on that. So this is a thunderstorm cell. You know it is in its mature stage because we see both an updraft and a downdraft. The updraft is in red here. You can kind of see the, the top of the updraft. Okay, but now the updraft is getting kind of tangled in that mesocyclone that I was talking about, basically kind of the tube of air within the supercell that's, that's rotating. And one of the things, the reason that supercells can last longer than your ordinary cells is it has this wraparound. The updraft is, is, ro is, is caught up in the mesocyclone, as is the downdraft. So they're both caught up, and, and, it, and it can make it more intense. So actually the downdraft here associated with our precipitation is shown in blue. Um, and some features uh, that you see with this figure of a supercell that we looked at before. Um, notice, uh, remember, you can get kind of a flattening out as the cumulonimbus cloud hits the tropopause and doesn't usually penetrate into the stratosphere, kind of flattens out. We get an anvil. Look for the anvil, and basically you kind of have a sense for the direction the storm is moving. Also, though, um, you can get a sense for the intensity or the instability of the, um, of the storm by looking for those overshooting tops that's shown here, too. Um, this figure actually does go ahead, and um, the, uh, usually you see a tornado down here. Oftentimes, tornadoes really drop down from this thing we call a wall cloud, and I'll have you a, a picture of it. Basically, a wall cloud is, uh, comes down from the lifting um, condensation level. So kind of from the base of the cloud, you see kind of a squarish uh, wall cloud. Um, and then from that, if there's rotation, that's an indication that you might get a tornado. All tornadoes don't have wall clouds, I guess. So um, notice here we have that the cold front that's associated with the downdraft. Um, all right. So here are uh, a couple of um, uh, images, or this is an image of an aerial view of, um, I think there are three supercells here, okay? Um, let's see, a cluster of supercells, that's what it says. I don't know if you can see this. This would be uh, one, two, and three. So not so surprising, um, sometimes uh, conditions that would create one supercell you can get multiple supercells, but again, most thunderstorms are not supercells. Um, so uh, this actually is showing you um, uh, 
and it would be cute if it's not if it's not so darn destructive. I don't know if you can see this tornado down here extending from the base of this cloud.